Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. I'm not back, not by any traditional sense of the word anyway. I have just been playing an absolute ton of Vampire Survivors over the past week or so. In fact, I've got about 12 to 13 hours in it, as of the time that I'm recording this video. And I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to say about it. Mainly because, well, I haven't done this for a bit, and, well, after playing the game, I couldn't put my finger on why exactly I liked it. But then a video by a YouTuber who I assumed was long gone at this point, Matthew Matosis, came out. It is his video on context sensitivity, and it is an absolutely brilliant video, and I recommend you go watch it if you've got the time. And Vampire Survivors, I think at the very least, is an absolutely fantastic example of context sensitivity, but I feel like you could take the discussion one step further, to the point of simply doing what feels right. Now, for those of you who don't know what Vampire Survivors is, it's basically a game where you have a horrible curse and it's a horrible night. Yeah, I know, I've got to put the Castlevania reference in there because this is clearly just one big Castlevania reference as a game. But the entire idea is, all you can do is walk up, down, left and right, or in any direction if you use something like a mouse or a joystick. And you basically have very little in the way of defenses, but as you defeat enemies, they will drop these gems. And these gems will allow you to level up, gain new weapons, gain new items. But you will always only be doing that four-directional walking. Because all the weapons will fire and aim themselves automatically. So what you need to do is try and figure out the best strategy of dealing with the ever-approaching hordes and try to survive the 30-minute time limit while collecting these gems. And the entire idea of the context sensitivity video is making it so that things that you have to do in the game come more naturally to you, and the fact that you try and put so many actions on one button ends up being the problem. In this game, you've only got four buttons, but simultaneously, Everything you need to do comes to you naturally. You see the horde of encroaching skulls and monsters and vampire thralls and what have you coming at you from every direction, and your natural instinct is simply to evade them using the arrow keys. And then when they start dying, they all start dropping these shiny gems, and you think, ooh, shiny, and you want to go pick those up yourself, so you do. And then you level up, you gain new weapons, and this enforces your strategy you find yourself saying, okay, I've got the axe now, which means I should keep the variety of the horde above me, because if I don't do that, I will be making less use of the axe. The magic wand hits the one that's closest to me, so I can relatively leave that one alone, but I want to try and put myself in a spot where I can hit the strongest and biggest pain to me at that particular time. Do I need to get X upgrade or Y upgrade in order to evolve certain weapons? How am I going to survive when all of these enemies are bearing down on me? And the enemies help add to this objective as well. Whether it be simply flowing in from all directions, or some being stronger than others giving you a target to work with, or whether it be they push each other in so that the slower and bigger problems that you might have to deal with might end up being right in your face because you didn't take out enough of the slow ones. The game creates the objective that you need to do and gives you the challenge without relying on contact sensitivity. And I feel like it's an absolutely fantastic example of the craft because not only does it not rely on that sort of thing outside of needing to press a couple of buttons in order to get your upgrades, but those go away fast enough that they don't contract from the game feel, it helps you do what feels right. Which is why I think context sensitivity is such a big problem in video games as is outlined in the context sensitivity video because if you have to press a button in order to do something that feels unnatural it's going to take you out of the game whether it be needing to press a button to climb a, a, a vine or a rope or a chain even though you've got a particular jump button so as a result it ends up in this situation where everything comes to it naturally and you just do all of these actions naturally. Meanwhile, in a game like God of War, where you have to press a button in order to climb a chain, when you could just walk onto it and have Kratos does what feels natural, which would be to climb up the chain, it ends up being a problem and it ends up taking you out of the game field. And this is why Vampire Survivors does so well. Not to mention Vampire Survivors has a lot of 
uh, uh, d definite advantages on its sides as well. Like some really weird story stuff that goes on halfway through it. Or the fact that the levels are all completely different, have different surprises every few minutes, and you need to worry about them. Or how all of the different weapons are set up in such different ways that you might end up having a preferred kind of build. Or how many upgrades there are, so you've got an absolute ton of content to play. But the base gameplay never stops being viscerally satisfying because you're always doing what's right. And there are so many games that I've played over the past, like, year or two that have put so many different irrelevant actions onto buttons that otherwise wouldn't make any sense that just take you out of the game and out of the feel that it's trying to provide that it ends up being a real problem and that's why I've been enjoying Vampire Survivors so much. And it even feeds back into why video games are so hard to get into for some people. Like, for example, my own parents. I've tried to get my own parents into video games and it's worked better for my father than it has for my mother. But having played through something like Vampire Survivors and being able to compare that with my experience with something else, it means that it gives me an idea of why it can be so difficult. Because if you look at a game like Candy Crush, doing what feels right in that game is so easy because it's a touchscreen, so the control method is entirely natural. And when you tap and drag, it does exactly what you expect it to. It goes toward its goal, which is matching up three things. And then it goes away and it gives you that satisfaction of doing it. Meanwhile, in a game like Call of Duty, for example, where instead of naturally just being able to move through a door, like your guide is going through a door normally, instead of having to stop and press a button in order to do it, it ends up feeling unnatural. And when you combine two or three of these minor things and have them all come up at once, it can end up being incredibly confusing for the new video game player. And even then, some of these games do it better than others. Like, for example, you get a game like Mario Kart. All you need to do is tell them three buttons. Accelerate, brake, and the button that fires off your weaponry and point out how to get a weapon once they're on the track. And the game basically carries itself. And that's the upside and downside of context sensitivity and doing what feels right. If you get it right, you get a game like Vampire Survivors, where the entirety of the objective, uh, beat up the enemies, collect the shiny things, and stay alive, is done entirely via four buttons, and the lack of context sensitivity keeps you in the game every single time. Meanwhile, you've got more complicated games that are harder to get into, and the more complex you make it, the harder you make it to not only stay engaged with your game, but simultaneously, you make it harder to uh, get someone else into your game that might otherwise enjoy it, simply because it doesn't make that sort of inherent sense that would help. Yeah, that's pretty much all I've got to say on that one. Also, yeah, Vampire Survivors is fantastic. Uh, go play the game on itch.io if you've got no idea what it's about, and if you end up playing it for more than a couple of hours, buy the Steam version. It's like three bucks. There's a reason why it's one of the most popular games on the Steam Deck, because it's incredibly easy to just have this going in one window, have a podcast or something going in the other window, and doing what feels right while simultaneously getting your bloody backlog of things done. With that said, this has been Blue Maxima. I might see you again.